Hi, my lovely, amazing, beautiful people. How y'all doing today? If you are new to my channel, I want to welcome you here. And I hope that something will be said that will be beneficial towards you and you would want to be moved to click subscribe. And when you do so, I also hope that you would click the notification bell in the corner so you can be notified when I drop another word. And if you are returning, thank you so much for rocking with your girl. Listen, I just have a quick word for somebody today. Just a very quick word. And this is for someone who it feels like God has you on mute. I mean, it literally feels like you're on mute. What does that mean? That means that it's not like you're not praying. It's not like you're not crying out to God. It's not like you're not fasting. It's not like you are not worshiping. It is not like you are not taking everything to God in prayer. You do so, and you may even be doing so intensely. But for some reason, it feels like God has you on mute. It feels like he has you on mute. And I want to encourage you that that may be a very real thing that you are feeling. That may be a, a true Thing. It feels like God is not moving on your behalf. It's, it's like he's not budging for you. And you can make this claim boldly because of your experience, because you walk with the Lord, because you know what it's like for the Lord to be at your beck and call. You know what it's like for God to come in and move obstacles. You know what it's like for God to come in and move mountains. But for some reason, you are in a season and it feels like God has you on mute. And I want to encourage you that if it feels like God has you on mute, I want you to consider that that may very well be the case. But let me let you know that it's not because you are on punishment. It's not because God is, is angry with you. It's not because he is mad with you. But the reason it may feel like you're on mute is because God is not able to move for you at this particular moment. What does that mean? That means that there is a set time. There is a time. There is a set time for breakthrough. There is a set time for you to walk in your purpose. There is a set time for healing. There is a appointed time. The pastor said that the storm won't stop until it finishes. And so God, he hears your prayers. He sees your tears. He knows the state of anguish that you're in. He knows how desperate you are at this moment. But there is things that God needs to put in you. There are things that God needs to take out of you. There are tests that we have to take. I heard something earlier today that blew my mind. A faith that hasn't been tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. Come on, somebody say that again. A faith that has not been tested is a faith that cannot be trusted. If you are in the testing seat, congratulations. If you are in the testing seat, hallelujah, that's because God has his hand on you. God is doing something in you and eyes have not seen and nor ears have heard. It feels like you're on mute, but you're not on mute. But the fact that the matter is, is God does not operate, move on your, on, on our metrics of what we consider to be time, that there is an appointed time. And so there is no sense of urgency with God because he knows that he's going to pull you out. And more importantly, you concerned that if I don't get pulled out soon, this is going to be to my detriment. This is going to be to my ruin. Another reason why he's, there's no sense of urgency with him is because not only is he going to pull you out of that thing for his glory. Glory, but he's also going to make sure that he restore you. I want to give you a scripture that I've been meditating on and it's coming out of first Peter chapter five. And it says, now I want to read the King James version. I'm going to read the message version. The King James version says, and the God of all grace who has called you into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore uh, restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. And I like how the Message Bible puts it. The Message Bible says it like this. It says, the suffering won't last forever. It says, it won't be long before this generous God who has called you, who has great plans for us in Christ, eternal and glorious plans they are, 
will have you put together and on your feet for good. He gets the last word. Yes, he does. After you have suffered a little while, the God of all glory will himself confirm. He will himself restore. He will himself strengthen. He will himself establish you. So God is not panicking. There is no sense of urgency. God is doing something. God is testing his product. God is aligning some things for you. He hears you, but he he cannot move at the present moment because there is an appointed time for you to not fret, to be not weary in well-doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. One of my favorite scriptures, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. And it seems like you're on mute. You're not necessarily on mute, but it seems like you're on mute. How can we say that? Because you've been praying, because you've been asking, because you've been crying out to God. You've been crawling to the altar. You've been getting into your prayer closet. You done put it all out there on the line. You done came naked before him. You came empty before him. You came withholding nothing. And it seems like God is not budging. It seems like he is not moving, but he is not panicking. He is not panicking and he's, there's no sense of urgency. Why? Because there is an appointed time. There is a set time and oh what a joyous occasion it will be oh what a powerful moment it will be how god is going to get every drop of glory out of your life hallelujah because god hears you hallelujah this is the same god that says i know how many hairs you have on your head this is the same god that built you that knit you together that fashioned you ah before you got into your mother's womb this is the god who called you hallelujah before you were conceived he chose you before the foundations of the earth you are not on mute you are not on mute. God hears you. He sees you. There is an appointed time. There's an appointed time for your breakthrough. For God is going to exceed your expectations. For we serve an exceeding and abundant kind of God. To get ready because God is going to give some of us double for our trouble. I want you to get ready because a lot of times God saves the best for last. The Bible says that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. Hallelujah. I want you to start speaking faith into your situation. Start speaking over yourself. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this message. I thank you for uh, my sister and brother watching this video right now right now, Lord. Lord, I pray that you will look upon them right now, God, for only you know what they're going through. Only you know the level of intensity, God. Only you know the level of intensity, God, of their season. Only you know the level of intensity, God, of the warfare, oh God. You know the level of intensity, God, of the torment that they're going through, the anguish, God, the mental anguish, Father, the frustration, Lord, the, the depression, the anxiety, Lord. And I encourage them today, Lord, that they be not weary in well-doing, for in due season they shall surely reap if they faint not, O God. So, Father, I thank you for every promise that proceeds out of your mouth, God. I thank you, Lord, that after we have suffered a little while, that you will confirm us, you will restore us, you will strengthen us, you will establish us for your glory, O Father. Father, I pray that you will help us to keep our minds stayed on you, for then and only then will you be able to keep us in perfect peace. So help us to keep our mind looking to the hills, God, because all of our help, God, it comes from you. Some trust in chariots and some trust in horses, but many of us, God, we put our hope and our trust in you, Father. So we wait for you, God. We wait for your hand, O oh Lord. We wait for you to feed us. We wait for you to nurture us. We wait for you to comfort us. We wait to you, Lord, to show up in our situation, Lord. We, may, we wait for you to, to make sense of things. We wait for you, God, to make light of things. We wait for you, Lord, to, to, bring, um, to bring our manna, God. And so, Father, we thank you right now for what you are doing, though we cannot see it, though we cannot feel it, though it feels like we're on mute. We know better. Hallelujah. We know that you are working. We know that you are moving. We know that you are faithful. We know that you are an unforsaking God. Hallelujah. Glory to your great name, O oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Oh, God. We katarabashe. Oh, Father, we lift you up, God, in this place. We lift you up all over the world, God, wherever we are, God. Some of us on mountain high, some of us in valley lows, oh, God. Some of us just in downright dead things, oh, God. But we thank you because you are the God of resurrection. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you that you are the way, Father. We look unto you, God. We look unto you for where our hope comes from, Lord. We thank you, oh, God. We thank you for the restoration, Lord, that is nigh. Oh, God, the healing that is nigh, oh, God. 
We thank you, Lord, for picking us, picking us up, God. Placing our feet on solid ground, oh, Father. We thank you, Lord, that our salvation will be intact, God. Our souls will be intact, oh, Father. That we will have a right mind. That we won't look like what we've been through, oh, God. That we will come out of the fire, but we will not smell like smoke. Hallelujah. Glory to your great name. We thank you, Lord, for the glory, God, that you're going to get. Hallelujah. We thank you for every testimony that will come forth. For your word declares that we, we overcame him by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the lamb, oh God. So we thank you, God, for what you are doing. So, Father, I pray that you would keep us strong. Keep us, keep us at your feet. Keep us, God, in your bosom. That we may have everything we need. God, we give your name all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. In your son Jesus Christ's name, amen. I love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Peace.